today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I am streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a great start to their week. Hi, Pachu. Hi, Miriam. Hi, Anara. And hello, after Anara, the person with a Cyrillic name. Unfortunately, I can't read Cyrillic. Maybe I will learn in the future. Welcome, everybody. Today, IELTS speaking part one. I will teach you some strategies and we will work through some examples together. This lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for the academic version of the IELTS exam. Check us out there for lots of help, including six original practice exams, a fully interactive course, and over 100 hours of video lessons. For general outs, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S help. Dot com. It's the same idea, except the writing and reading sections focus on general IELTS and not the academic. Hi, Amarjeet. Hi, Mikkonen. Hi, Shang Hung. Good to see members in the class on time. Our websites look like this. This is ahelp.com. Click that big red button to join. And this is our general IELTS website here. Click that red button to join us there. As well, get our app from your app store, Academic IELTS Help. Look for our logo, our shield. And if you have questions about the exam or about our product, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. All right, everyone, let's get into today's class. I believe I have posted this week's schedule. Um, just to start off, I have a multiple choice question for you students. Uh, here we go. Here's an interesting question. How should you think of your IELTS speaking interview? A, as a chat with your best friend in a coffee shop. B, as a business meeting with partners. C, as a job interview for a high-level executive position, or D, as a thesis defense in university? Which of these do you think is the best answer? How should you think about your job interview? Carolina says C. Satisfying Time says C. Mon says C. Steve says maybe D. McConan says A. So we got some mixed answers here. Charlie Sen says B. All right, well, I like the uh, variety students. There's definitely some discrepancy among uh, all of you of which is the best approach. And that's quite interesting if you think about it, that there's a lot of different answers. <laughs> Cole Winder says definitely A. All right, so in my opinion, the best way uh, to think about your speaking interview is uh, B, as a business meeting with partners. Now, of course, the big question that probably a lot of you are asking is, why? Okay, before we get to that, let's ask the why not question. So, why not? So why is it not a good idea to think about the speaking interview as a chat with your best friend in a coffee shop? Why is A not a good idea? Anybody? What's the reasoning or what's the logic behind that? Why would it be a bad idea to go sit and look at the examiner thinking, hey, that's my best friend. I'm going to just uh, have a good little chit chat here. So Vihari says it's too informal. Alessandra agrees it would be too informal. Satisfying Time says too informal. It's a semi-formal dialogue. Yeah, so you're right. Um, thinking about the IELTS interview as a chat with your best friend is not a good idea for a few reasons, okay? I'll tell you why. It's very dangerous, and some students do this, uh, and uh, they don't get as good of a score as they could, okay? So... Too informal, that's one reason. Uh, speech is too short. 
So when, um, when people think about the exam as talking with their best friend, they sometimes answer in very short phrases like, yes, I think that's great. Um, and that simply does not show your true or your maximum English level. So it's too informal. Speech is, speech is too short. And also you assume that the other person knows what you know. That's the other big danger of thinking about the examiner as your friend. So people will say, oh, yeah, I use uh, Facebook and Instagram. Okay, call me stupid, but what's Facebook? What's Instagram? Okay, you have to be much clearer in your interview. You have to say, I use a social media website, which allows me to communicate and share photos called Facebook or another social media site that lets me share personal photos, short term called Instagram. So you go into more details. If you think about the examiner as your friend, you just use these terms, Facebook, Instagram, as you do in every day, and it doesn't allow you clear description. Okay. So that's another reason why. Okay. Um, let's just quickly talk about this one. Why is C a job interview for a high level executive position? Why do you think that's not the best answer here? So why is C? It's not a bad answer. So C is, C is fairly good, okay? But it's still not the best. What's, what's different about a high-level executive position uh, job interview uh, that wouldn't work the best for the IELTS? So what, what's, the, what's the difference there? Why is, why is C not the best choice? Yeah, so satisfying time says maybe if you're thinking about it like a, uh, you're applying for the dream job of your life, then you feel too much pressure, right? Exactly. So you feel too much pressure. And in the IELTS exam, you don't want to feel too much pressure. You want to breathe. You want to relax. You want to feel confident. Now, hey, if you're a person that has a lot of confidence walking into a job interview for a high-level executive position, fantastic. That's great. But a lot of people would feel really nervous doing that. So too nervous, too much at stake. You should relax and feel confident. Okay, so that leaves us with D here. Okay, so these are kind of the why you don't want to think about your interview in this way. Um, so why is it not a good idea to think about the interview as a thesis defense in, the, in university? Um, for those of you who are not sure what that means, when you do a master's or a PhD, a doctorate in university, you write a thesis paper. A thesis paper is your research paper. It's basically a short book, maybe about 100, 200 pages long. And then you actually have to defend your thesis. So you have to defend your research and your position in front of a panel of experts, professors usually. So that's your thesis defense. So many of you that are going into thesis programs for master's doctorate, um, you will be required to do a thesis defense in university. Why would you not want to think about your speaking interview like a thesis defense, like you're defending your thesis? So Alexander says the thesis is quite long. This is Alexander Nelson says the thesis is quite long. It's usually discussed as a monologue. Okay. Um, yes. So maybe a little bit too much talking, right, Alexander? You don't want to think about uh, your IELTS interview as a monologue, as something where you're just talking and talking until you go off topic. Absolutely. Satisfying time says maybe uh, you're replying to answers too deeply. Sure. All right. And Naja says it means you probably are using, this is Anaja Alves, and that's a clever answer, Inaja, or Inaya, I'm not sure about the pronunciation, um, that you're maybe using memorized information, and that's not a good idea either. Yeah, you're right. 
Okay. So those are some good reasons. There's one more reason. So Too much depth, yeah, maybe, but you do want to go into details in your answers on the exam. Um, the other reason why, I still don't see it, um, the other reason why is because uh, in your thesis, you want to prove your research, you want to prove your point, you want to prove your truth, okay? But in the IELTS exam, you don't, okay? In the IELTS exam, your goal is not to prove your truth or your real opinion necessarily, but your goal is to give a good answer. And sometimes that means just choosing a simple idea, maybe one that you don't even agree with, okay? So in the exam, you want to choose an answer that 9 out of 10 people will agree with, okay? So... Um, Okay, so you don't want to do that in the IELTS interview. You don't want to argue your truth. You don't want to convince the examiner that you have all of the answers in the world, okay? It's not the place to do it. Your goal is just to get a high band score. So then we come to our final question here is, why should you think about your IELTS interview as a business meeting with your partners, okay? So... Why is it a good idea to think about the uh, speaking interview as uh, having a meeting with some business partners? Okay, so what's the logic there? So you should be confident. Feel yourself equal with the examiner. You have a common goal to get a good score. Okay? The IELTS examiner, just like your business partner, wants you to succeed. So whenever I interview a student, I want them to succeed. I want them to get a band 7. I want them to get a band 8. That means working together. I'll ask you a question give me a nice, full, detailed answer that's accurate, and I'll ask you another good follow-up question. So we're working together in good communication, right? Okay, so believe it or not, the examiner is not out to get you. They're not there to destroy your life, okay? They're there to grade you, and they hope that you will get a good band score, okay? So... You want to speak respectfully. With full, clear sentences. Okay. Now, one other really important part of a good business meeting with partners, and for those of you who have had experience in business meetings will surely agree with me on this, is it's very important to stay on topic. For a business meeting to be productive, to be effective, you have to stay on topic. You have to focus on the questions at hand, okay? So, All right, so those are all great reasons why you should think about the speaking interview as a meeting with some business partners, okay? They're not your superiors. You paid for the exam. You're there to do a job. You've studied hard for it, all right? But of course you want to be respectful, okay? 
Um, Carolina, yes, the examiner in most cases is the same person that scores your speaking. And they're scoring it in real time. Uh, they're using kind of a code to do it. So you can't just guess by seeing what they write down. Uh, they have a number scheme that, uh, that they use. And if there's problem with the scoring, then they might ask another person to help score it. That's why they record the speaking. Every speaking exam is recorded, should be recorded, and then cataloged just in case there's a big problem with the score. For example, if their speaking score of a student is, uh, let's say, band four, every other section is band seven or eight, then obviously there might be some problem there and they'll rescore and they'll get another person uh, to score it. And sometimes they'll get a third person to score it as well. Okay. All right, students. So let's get into it. So you get into your speaking interview. Uh, visualize and uh, imagine that you're in a meeting with partners. <clears throat> you can also visualize that you're speaking with your grandfather, grandmother. It's kind of the same idea as I mentioned in previous classes. And you have about 12, maximum 15 minutes to prove your English ability. Let's start with the examiner question. So the examiner welcomes you into the room. They ask you to take your seat and they'll say, may I see your passport, please? May I see your passport, please be natural, be ready for this question. Make sure you have the same ID that you used to register. And then Onisim Lanut says, of course, here you are. Uh, satisfying Times says, yes, with pleasure. Please have a look. Satisfying Times, that's okay. Just make sure to sound really natural with that. So yes, with pleasure. Please have a look. Zainab says, yes, uh, please have a look. Carolina says, sure, here you are. Please take a look. Uh, so Rob says, here it is, sir or madam. Yep, yeah, that works as well. Okay. Farheen says, yes, with pleasure, here you are. Uh, with pleasure, it's a little bit awkward, ladies and gents. Um, uh, we usually don't give our passport with pleasure, but um, um, it, with pleasure, we use that in a situation like if I'm visiting someone and um, uh, I ask them, may I have a glass of water? And then they'll respond, yes, of course, with pleasure, and they'll give me a glass of water. Okay, so passport, it's okay. It's not completely weird, but I probably wouldn't use it myself. Okay, so here we go. Uh, may I see your passport, please? Yes, certainly. Here it is. Please have a look. Okay, so there's a natural answer. Just repeat after me. Uh, yes, certainly. Here it is. Please have a look. Okay. Danish, yes, certainly, here you are. It's very good. All right, then the next question, of course, will be, what is your full name? They will keep your passport until you give your full name. They will match the name in your passport with what you tell them. Okay. Uh, Sonu, for the previous one, there is no most preferable a lot of the other ones that we mentioned and students wrote are absolutely okay. There's a lot of different ways uh, to answer that first question. There's no one perfect way, okay? Um, Onisim says, my full name is Stosia Onisim. Please uh, just call me Lanut, okay? Um, Pachu says, sir, or Pachu asks, Sir, can we use undoubtedly in case of definitely? Um, not always, Pachu. Not in every situation. Undoubtedly and definitely are not perfect synonyms, so careful with that. Okay. Alexander says, my full name is Alexander Nelson. You can call me Alex. That's good. Carolina Asanio says, my full name is Carolina Asanio. As you can see on my passport, please call me uh, Carolina. Okay. Carolina, I think it's better to say, as you can see in my passport, but on my passport's acceptable. Okay. Nima Tula says, or Shakrani, sorry, says my full name is Nima Tula. 
Shakrani, and please call me Shakrani. Yes, I've learned that now. Um, okay, those are some good answers. So again, just practice different ways so you sound natural. Um, my full name, let's do it this way. My surname is uh, Smith, and my given name is uh, Thomas, as indicated in my passport. Please just call me Tom. All right. So repeat after me. What is your full name? My surname is Smith and my given name is Thomas as indicated in my passport. Please just call me Tom. Nice and fluent, okay? Uh, show your fluency right away, all right? Students, this is a speaking class, so repeat as much as possible. Okay, if you miss a question or a statement, that's okay. The video will be on the channel later, so you can go back and review. And then the examiner will say, okay, uh, Tom, here is your passport back. Uh, now for part one, I will ask you a couple questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Again, keep in mind, Sounds like it's going to be a friendly chit chat, but it's not. It's a business meeting with partners, okay? Express yourself completely, stay confident, stay at least semi formal in your responses. Here we go. Uh, where do you live? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that. Where do you live? Okay, be clear. Carolina says, I live in the beautiful city of Buenos Aires, Argentina, which is the capital of Argentina, right? Okay, very good. Uh, Satisfying Time says, currently I live in a small town in the east of Algeria called Sucaras, Sucaras uh, which is known as the home of lions. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, Mr. A... Nonim says, I have been living in Baku, which is the capital of Azerbaijan, for three years um, due to my studies. Okay, Mr. A, Nonim, that's okay, but express to me a little bit more clearly the end of your sentence. So, I have been living in Baku, which is the capital of Azerbaijan, uh, for the past three years, studying at the University of Azerbaijan. Okay, so maybe give me a little bit more clarity than just simply saying due to my studies. So what? What studies? Okay, finish that idea. All right, um, let's see. A couple more. Amar Wadi says, I live in a small city called Damietta, which is situated in the north of Egypt. Danish says, I live in a beautiful city, New Delhi, which is the capital of India, nearly 8 million people live there. All right, those are some good answers. Students sometimes uh, ask me with this question, they ask me, uh, should I say the city or town or the house, apartment? That's a good question. The answer is both. Okay, uh, that gives the most clear response. So where do you live? Again, clarity, always reach for clarity. Um, the greatest level of clarity I can give here is I live in a two bedroom apartment in downtown Victoria which is the capital of the most western province of Canada, British Columbia. It's my actual hometown. I'll use that one today. Um, so notice it's not a lot. So in two short lines here, basically in one descriptive sentence, 
I give a lot of clarity of where I actually live. Look at all the detail, two bedroom apartments. So immediately I have quantitative language. You get an idea of the size of my living space and the shape or the type of living space. In downtown Victoria, so by adding downtown Victoria, okay, uh, immediately you get an idea that I'm in the heart of the city, all right? If you're on the outskirts, you can say outskirts of Victoria, or for those of you living in New Delhi, you could say outskirts of New Delhi or suburban area of New Delhi, okay? Um, and then here, following with an adjective clause, which is the capital of the most western province of Canada, British Columbia. So again, a lot more description. That's how you get that band nine level communication going, okay? So again, repeat after me. I live in a two bedroom apartment in downtown Victoria, which is the capital of the most western province of Canada, British Columbia, okay? Jancy, uh, Jose, um, downtown's meaning means the core of the city. So it means the center of the city. It's where you find city hall, the central police station, fire department, usually one or two big shopping malls. Um, so it's the heart of the city. Okay. All right. And then you'll get another question. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they'll just go right into, uh, the topic of part one. Uh, what is your favorite movie? What is your favorite movie? Give me a nice answer for that. So Charlie says, my favorite movie is 2001 Oscar winning film, The Beautiful Mind. It is a biography of the renowned mathematician John Frobs Nash being a major in math. When I saw the movie, I was amazed. Yes, uh, I know the movie, uh, Charlie. Who's the lead actor? It's uh, a famous guy from Gladiator. Uh, Beautiful Mind was a great movie. I agree with you, Charlie. Very nice movie indeed. And I think he's a schizophrenic, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Danish says, Danish Reza says, my favorite movie is PK, which is the most successful movie of Bollywood. In fact, last week I saw this with my younger brother and we both enjoyed it a ton. Okay, Danish, very good. Um, just watch your um, wordiness, Danish. So my favorite movie is, you don't need to say the name, okay? It's just my favorite movie is PK, which is the most successful movie of Bollywood. In fact, last week I saw this with my younger brother. You notice how you're repeating the word movie, movie, movie. You don't need to do that. Just use pronouns, okay? Hung Liman says, the film I find most intriguing is Upgrade, which, is ba which basically revolves around a man who is implanted with a chip, allowing him to control his body after a mugging leaves him paralyzed. It's an amazing film or an amazing story. Uh, Hung, very nice. Nice description. Couple of slight uh, corrections there. So take note of that. Um, yes, Danish, I believe for India, we do use provinces. Yeah. So province of Rajasthan, I think we say that. Yeah. Um, okay, Aman, uh, Jam says, my favorite movie is Sultan. It is quite attractive and it's made by the king of Hollywood. His name is Salman Khan. Okay, so he's the producer, Aman, or is he a lead actor in the movie? Careful, because it sounds like you're talking about a producer. I'm not familiar with Bollywood, um, people so much. So I wouldn't know. You have to describe it very, very clearly. Okay. All right. So, uh, my favorite movie of all time, or let's paraphrase, right? Film of all time is Shawshank Redemption which is a drama thriller 
about a man who is wrongly accused of murder and sent to jail from where he escapes with an ingenious plan. It is acclaimed as one of the greatest movies of all time by IMDb fans, which is an internet movie database. All right. So it's quite a detailed answer, but I thought I'd share that interesting little uh, tidbit with you. Okay. So again, what is your favorite movie? My favorite film of all time is Shawshank Redemption, which is a drama thriller about a man who is wrongly accused of murder and sent to jail from where he escapes with an ingenious plan. It is acclaimed as one of the greatest movies of all time by IMDb fans, which is an internet movie database. All right. Nima Tula says, maybe that's too long. Uh, it depends, Nima Tula. So sometimes students wonder, you know, is that answer too long for that icebreaker? If the examiner asks me this question, if I try to give an answer this long and Nima Tula says, or Shakrani, sorry, Shakrani says, I think that's maybe too long. Um, it depends on your fluency, okay? So if you say my favorite film of all time is Shawshank Redemption, and then you pause and go, um, it's, uh, uh, then the examiner will interrupt you and ask the next question. But if you can say it fluently, my favorite film of all time is Shawshank Redemption, which is a drama thriller about a man wrongly accused of murder, then sent to jail, and then he escapes with an ingenious plan. It's a claim to be one of the greatest films of all time. If you can say it quickly like that and clearly, there's no way the examiner will be able to cut you off and get to the next question. But only do that if you have the fluency. If not, keep it a little bit shorter. Okay? All right, here we go, students. So after those icebreakers, the examiner will say, no, it's not important, Sasaibra, to tell the truth. If you come up with a completely different name of a film, it's fine. So then the examiner will say, let's talk about reading. Okay, so they'll introduce the topic of part one with that statement. Let's talk about reading. Okay. Uh, what types of books or magazines do you read? So, what type of books or magazines do you read? Okay. Alessandra, make sure that you're staying on topic and then it doesn't affect the next question. So Satisfying Time says, personally, I love reading um, technology magazines. It doesn't matter from what publisher, as long as it talks about computers, phones, inventions, and new software. It keeps me up to date. Satisfying Times, that's very good. It's a good answer. It's a great answer. Um, useful for you says, to be honest, nowadays I seldom read any kind of book or magazine. However, I prefer to listen to uh, audio shape of book or journal because listening takes a little, little less time than reading. Really? Useful for you? I think I read much faster than I can listen. Um, that's an interesting response. It's also a little bit off topic. You're talking about listening to information now. I'm talking about reading. Make sure you stay on topic, okay? Even if you're telling me the truth, don't, okay? Um, so here, just say, I don't really read books or magazines too much these days. However, if I do get the chance, I read um, BBC News Magazine on my phone. Okay, so stay on topic, all right? Faisal Boskurt says, 
Okay, it's off topic. We'll go to another one. Uh, Golnaz uh, Jadigarova says, I find mystic thrillers fantastic and uh, detective genres for books the most attractive, and I read these quite regularly. Uh, Golnaz, I made a few corrections there. Inaya Alves says, I typically read magazines that are related to my job. I work as a dentist and I need to keep up to date all the time with new procedures that are developing in my profession. Okay, Inaya, a couple of corrections there to make it uh, more accurate. We'll take that one. So... I typically read magazines on dentistry since I am a dentist and I need to keep up to date with new developments in my profession as well. If I have a bit of free time, I like to read mystery novels for entertainment. I just read Mystic River last week. Boom. Okay, that's good. Um, so here we go. Again, focus on fluency. Repeat after me. I typically read magazines on dentistry since I am a dentist and I need to keep up to date with new developments in my profession. As well, if I have a bit of free time, I like to read mystery novels for entertainment. I just read Mystic River last week. Okay, build that fluency so you can get these nice detailed descriptive answers out to the examiner. Answer, explain, example. Now it's books or magazines, so you don't have to say both, but if you can, it will ring better, okay? It will get you better band scores, all right? Uh, let's keep going here. Which do you think is a more important skill, reading or writing? Kind of an interesting question. Hmm. What would be a good answer to that? Which do you think is a more important skill, reading or writing? Onisim says, I believe that both writing and reading have a uh, significant importance. However, if it comes to choose one, I regard writing skills more useful as it, re as it is required. I didn't quite catch the end of that Onisim before it flew off the page, as it is required during something, tasks and situation, okay? Chaitra says, certainly both skills are essential. Reading improves eye coordination, while writing helps to develop good penmanship. Uh, Chaitra, I don't know if those are, that's very good logic for why reading is important and writing is important. It's a bit of an awkward answer. It's K-pop says, well, both are necessary, but I feel that reading is more important because if we travel to another region, then we can read signs and instructions, whereas writing will not be so essential. Okay. Exam Pro says, well, both have equal importance in people's lives where I usually do practice for both because I would wish to appear for this language exam. All right. Sasaebra 17 says, writing due to input skills. Interesting question. Uh, writing due to, do, oh, let me catch that one more time. So many comments coming, it's flying off the screen. All right, so Sasaebra 17 says, writing, due to input skills which obligate us to be involved with language abilities. I'd rather be a strong writer than a reader. Okay, finish your idea, Sasaebra, uh, especially when you're making a comparison. All right. 
Fata Mok says, Sir, I've recently taken my IELTS exams four days ago, which wasn't satisfactory for me, so I'm planning to redo it. But this time I want to accomplish the perfect score. What do you recommend me to do? Fata, study, read, and write every single day. Check out our websites, aehelp.com, gilshelp.com. Shang Hung says, both of them are important since reading is an input skill and writing is an output skill. If you don't input enough, you don't have any ideas to output. Uh, Shang Hung, very, very good answer. I was wondering when uh, one of you would come up with that clever uh, perspective on reading and writing. Um, all right. So let me answer this for you as well. Clearly, both of these abilities are extremely important to master in life. But if I had to choose one over the other, I would say that it is reading since this is an input skill that allows me to gather information and it precedes sharing information which is done through writing. All right. So, uh, Shang Hung, yeah, I agree with you. I think it is a good question of the chicken and the egg, right? Which came first? Arguably, reading uh, comes before writing. Uh, students, this is where the power of visualization can be very effective. So if you visualize which of these skills did you read or <laughs> did you learn first, uh, most of you will agree that reading is what you learned first. So most parents, most schools, preschools, focus on teaching reading before writing. They're close, but reading usually comes before writing because we learn to read in order to learn to write. So, um, which do you think is a more important skill, reading or writing? Repeat after me. Clearly, both of these abilities are extremely important to master in life, but if I had to choose one over the other, I would say that it is reading, since this is an input skill that allows me to gather information and precedes sharing information, which is done through writing. Okay, so that's probably a good argument to make. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to give a clear answer. Um, what impact has the internet had on reading? Let's go to that question. It's a good one. Give me a nice full sentence answer. What impact has the internet had on reading? Hint, pay attention to the grammar of that question. Okay, make sure to show me the right grammar in your answer. Charlie Sen off to a quick start. I think the inter, and I bl believe there's probably gonna be more coming. All right, Zainab answering the previous question. Both skills are essential, but I believe writing is independent from reading to get ideas and to know structure. Zainab, it's not a very clear answer for the previous question. Okay, let's focus on this one, students. What impact has the internet had on reading? Again, visualize. So seeing information is very, very important. Picture what... People are doing these days with the internet, how they use it for information. Picture what people were doing before the internet. I know that's maybe tricky or difficult sometimes these days, but there was a world before the internet, uh, before Mother Google came into our lives. There was a world around our parents and our grandparents, and even during my childhood. Um, and uh, people read differently, certainly. So, 
Tuguldur says, uh, since the internet, especially social media, including massive amounts of written information, uh, people read a lot um, and a, on a wide variety of subjects. Uh, Tuguldur, I kind of get what you're saying, but you need to clear it up, okay? Uh, it's K-pop says internet played an amazing role in our lives. Um, K-pop, careful with your grammar, especially your tense. Internet has played or has been playing, right? Present perfect continuous uh, K-pop. Internet has been playing an amazing role in our lives. The world has turned into a global village. So aspects like connecting people worldwide, uh, ordering, expressing oneself is just a click away. Uh, K-pop, you're getting a low band score for that because you're not answering my question. I'm asking you how inter the internet has affected reading. You're not clearly answering that and you're making a grammar mistake. So it's going to be a sad K-pop song if you answer that way. Okay. Uh, Amar Wadi says, oh, I believe the internet has had a great influence on reading because we can read a lot of interesting information online. We can read magazines, novels, news, as well as hundreds and thousands of posts from our favorite celebrities, our friends, our parents through social media websites like Facebook, right? Okay, Amar, not bad. Give me an example. Let me give you a higher band score, okay? All right, those are some good answers, by the way, students. So keep going, all right? Keep pushing forward. Um, let's see. Uh, Inaya Alves says, the internet is a good tool to practice reading since we are forced to read in order to communicate with friends and social media. It facilitates um reading current events in the world on our devices like our mobile phones all right uh students this is a present perfect sentence so use present perfect uh right away the world wide web has had a major impact on people's reading habits. I believe that before the internet, people would read longer novels and articles But since the advent of online information, people tend to read short snippets of text like emails, notifications, and messages from friends. I know I haven't read a 200 page book in like a decade. All right. So uh, again, if you are asked a question that's present perfect, has had, uh, make sure that you reflect, okay? It is a business meeting with partners. You're there uh, to achieve a goal. Your goal here is to show your high level English and communication ability. So that's what you need to do. Uh, the World Wide Web has had a major impact on people's reading habits. I believe that before the internet, people would read longer novels and articles, but since the advent of online information, people tend to read short snippets of text like emails, notifications, and messages from friends. I know I haven't read a 200 page book in like a decade. All right. It's not true. 
I think reading novels is very, very important. And students, one way to improve your skills for your IELTS exam is to read longer novels. So while you're studying for your next IELTS exam, you should have a nice long novel that you read a few pages from every single day, 10, 15 pages, okay, like an hour of reading. Okay, that's a good way, okay? A snippet means just a short piece of information, Charlie. All right, students, uh, here are two more questions. Do you think it's important for parents to read to their children, or is this the teacher's job? Do you agree with the following statement? Learning to read will set you free. Why or why not? Uh, these two questions I am going to leave for you to do for homework. Uh, record it on your mobile phone. Send it to me by email. And I will give you a score estimate, a band score estimate of your speaking level. Okay. Uh, for last week's class, I had quite a few students send me their uh, MP3 recordings. And that was... Fantastic. Good job for those students who did that. Um, so here are the questions again. Do you think it's important for parents to read to their children? Or is this the teacher's job? Do you agree with the following statement? Learning to read will set you free. Why or why not? I'll leave that to you for homework. Again, to improve your IELTS band scores quickly, join our websites. Spend a couple dollars to get some of the best help in the world online for your next IELTS exam. For general outs, check us out at gieltshelp.com. Click that red button. For academic, check us out here at aehelp.com. Click that big red button to join us there. Uh, Rahim Ula, how much should you pay for the package? When you click the red Join Now button, it will tell you it's different for different regions of the world depending on the uh, uh, economic status of the country. So you'll have to click that red button to find out. Um, all right, students, I will be back tomorrow uh, with two classes, uh, one for speaking part two for members uh, a little bit earlier in the day, and then same time as now for everyone reading passage practice with answers. Eugene, awesome. I thought you might be in the class. Have a great day, everyone. And if it's late in your country, then sweet dreams to you. Get a good night's rest. Wake up tomorrow feeling positive, energized, ready for another day. Bye for now, everyone. Much love to you.